I'm grateful to be here today. It is such an honor, it's such a privilege. I thank God for putting me or making me be able to minister today. I also want to thank God for our bishop and Reverend Alice. For enabling me, for leading us and enabling me even to be able to do this today. And I'm also grateful to God. I have a family. I have uh, four children, adults. I have a daughter-in-law. And I have three grandsons. I'm believing God for more. And I thank God for that. I thank God for them. Really, today is a good day because it's the day the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Today we are going to, we have been going through spiritual disciplines. Or Christian disciplines. And we have gone through various disciplines the past few weeks. We took some time on giving. We took some time on fellowship, prayer, meditation, all that. Uh, now today we are going to look uh, also at another discipline. Now why is Christian discipline important for us? Scripture, uh, spiritual disciplines are just practices that believers are encouraged to do, to practice so that they grow to be more and more and more like Jesus Christ. And this uh, Christian disciplines when we practice them in the right way they will help us to grow deeper in the knowledge of Jesus Christ and, and live the life that he died to give us. Because transformation will take place in our lives as we practice them. We, do, we don't practice just one discipline. All of them. All of them are important. Zote zina ziko na manufaa yake. Uh, media give us Romans 8:29. Wana habari tupatie hiyo Warumi 8 mstari wa The Bible says for those God for new he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. This is just telling us that uh, you know, God predestined us to be conformed to the image of his son. And so these disciplines help us to be able to be that. First Corinthians 15, 49. First Corinthians 15, 49. The Bible says, and just as we have borne the image of the earthly man, so shall we bear the image of the heavenly man, that is Jesus Christ. Now these uh, disciplines are not just about doing, we don't just read the word, study the word, pray, fellowship, meditate, it's just not the doing, but for them to enable us to be 
like Jesus Christ. Now, these spiritual disciplines, when we fail to practice them, or we neglect, they cause us not to be spiritually sensitive to the things of God. You don't hear God's voice. You don't design things which are godly and ungodly. You don't hunger for God. And you also don't bear fruits. Uh, because as Christians, we have uh, been entrusted with the, the gospel, and uh, God has given us various giftings. But if we don't practice these Christian disciplines, there are no fruits. That is why you can hear people saying, is that one a Christian? Or if that is a Christian, then I would rather not be one. Because your fruits are not reflecting Jesus. You are not loving people. You don't forgive people. You, you, are not, you are just not what Jesus expects you to be. So that's when you practice this practice, these Christian disciplines, they help us. They help us to be, to, to be better people and be witnesses of Jesus Christ. And there are many places in the Old Testament when we talked of that. But maybe I can just say, being uh, in the Old Testament, we have people who have re shown us that they were good stewards. Now, a steward is a person who oversees another's house. Like we have Joseph when he was in the house of Potiphar. We have Elias. Abraham's uh, servant. Uh, and we also have stewards represented in the, in the New Testament. Now, steward just means the manager of household or household affairs of another person. So, when we are looking at stewardship, we, we are looking at somebody who is taking care uh, of somebody else's uh, property. All Christians, you and me, we are called stewards. First Corinthians 4, 1 to 2. First Corinthians 4, 1 and 2. This then is how you ought to regard us as servants of Christ and as those entrusted with the ministries God has revealed. Now it is required that those who have been given a trust must prove themselves faithful. So as stewards, we are meant to be faithful. And uh, it's good for us to, because we are taking, we are entrusted with something which is not ours. It belongs to somebody else. And in this case, God. God is the owner of all things. 
Let's look at Psalms 24, 1. Psalms 24.1. The Bible says, the earth is the Lord's, okay, okay, the earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. Then also Genesis 14. 19, if we can project that. And he blessed Abraham, saying, Blessed be Abraham by God most high, creator of heaven and earth. Our God is the creator of heaven and earth, and our God owns everything. And there are many other scriptures telling us that. So God as the owner He's the source of all good things. He's the giver. Then two, God is the one to whom account is given because he's the owner. And God is also the one who rewards us. Now, us as believers, who are we then? As stewards, as stewards, who are we? We are the receiver. We receive from God. Maybe if you project for us first, Corinthians 4, 7. We are the ones who receive. For whom, for who makes you different from anyone else? What do you have that you did not receive? And if you did receive it, why do you boast as though you did not? We receive, we are the ones who receive, and what we receive, we, because what do you have that you did not receive? All, all that we have, we have received. Amen? All that we have, we have received. Then too, we are accountable and responsible to the owner. Romans 14, 12. If you can just look for us, Romans 14, 12. We are, so then, each of us will give an account of ourselves to God. Because we have freely received. There's nothing we own. We have received, we shall give account to God. Who is the owner? Then Luke 6 2, Luke 6 2. Luke 6 2. Pili, yeah, Luke 6 2. So some of the Pharisees asked, Why are you doing this? What is unlawful on the Sabbath? Then it goes on, it is just asking, it's, it's right for us to do what is proper because we shall give an account. Then Matthew 25, 21, just, it says that his master replied, well done, good and faithful servant, you have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. So this one, the master was uh, telling that he was faithful. He was faithful. So we, are, we shall be rewarded for our faithfulness. So human beings are... Uh, Stewards, not by desire, not by choice. It's, you don't choose to be a steward. 
is the way God designed it. We are stewards. So today we are going to look as, at stewardship as a Christian discipline. As a Christian discipline. And uh, this is what, because we are entrusted with the master's business. Matthew, and, and when we are talking, talking of being entrusted, what is it that we have been entrusted with? Let's look at Matthew 28, 19 to 20. The Great Commission, the Great Commission. Let's, I'll read it for you. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you, and surely I'm with you always to the very end of the age. Also, if we can read the same in Mark, Mark 16, 15 to 18. Because he said, this is the Great Commission. Jesus himself, after he had risen, this is what he entrusted us with. He said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will accompany those who believe. In my name, they will drive out demons. They will speak in new tongues. They will pick up snakes with their hands and they will drink deadly poison. It will not, and when they drink deadly poison, it will not hurt them at all. They will place their hands on the sick and they will recover. Now, Jesus, this is what Jesus entrusted us with. We are stewards. So there are a few things we look at when we are looking at stewardship. They, they refer to them as principles of stewardship. So the first one is ownership. And what, as we have seen, God owns everything. We are not owners, God owns everything. So the second principle is the principle of, of uh, responsibility. We've said that we are responsible. And so as a part of us being responsible, the first thing is we, we are responsible to have a right relationship with God. One of our responsibilities is to make a decision to have a right relationship with God, who is the owner, by becoming saved. We accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior as an individual. God does not push it on us. So we have to accept to receive Jesus Christ. Take responsibility to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And as we have read the Great Commission, us as believers, we are meant to preach so that people get saved and the signs will follow us as we do whatever we have been told. 
So if we are here and we don't know Jesus Christ, please make a decision. It's your responsibility. You have to receive it. To receive. We are the receivers. So you receive salvation. God has given it, but we will receive. So today, don't go away without receiving the gift of God. So the first responsibility of us as stewards is that we give our lives to the Lord Jesus Christ. The second one is related to time. Time. Or, or maybe I can just uh, list them. I, yeah, it's the, the time that God has given us. Time is life and it is irreversible. To waste your time is to waste your life. So you must master your time. You'll give an account to God in relation to your time. And it's important for us to manage our time well. With the, the Bible says that uh, time is fleeting, is going by very fast. In various scriptures will talk of our days on earth are compared to a vapor or a breath. Kuna, they are very short. Or grass or, or a flower. So which with us very quickly. So our life is very brief. So we need to redeem our time. And uh, that means that, and also when we look at what is happening around, these are the last days. Because the time on earth is so short. We need to know how to use our time well. And we should also be able to know that we are going to live after this life. So we have to prepare ourselves for eternity. Ephesians 5, 15 and 16, please. Ephesians 5, 15 to 16. Be very careful then how you live. Not as unwise, but as wise. Making the most of every opportunity. Because the days are evil. So redeeming our time and using it wisely is related to our establishing, you know, right priorities. What is important, what is important to us. So time... We, as, as good stewards, we have been be, to be good stewards of our time. We also have to be good stewards of our bodies. Because God specifically formed our bodies. Psalms 139, 13 to 16 tells us, For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. 
My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depth of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. So this tells us that God formed us in a very special way. So your body is special to God. And because God created us, he owns us. So our bodies are unique. They are created in the image of God. They are special. So we are account, we shall be accountable to God for our stewardship of our bodies. How did we take care of our bodies? So we have to take good care of our bodies. We have to feed our bodies well. Because we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. We are also to exercise well. So that our bodies are, you know, in good shape. We cannot misuse our bodies because they are the temple of God. We should rest enough. We should sleep enough hours. So that we, we rejuvenate our bodies. So there are so many things which... Uh, why we should take care of our bodies. You have to eat well because, you know, most, not all diseases, but most diseases are related to how we feed ourselves, how we exercise, and many other things. So we have to take good care of our bodies. You have to eat well. You can't eat junk and expect to be healthy. You can't, you can't be a consumer of high sugars, high salt, high fat in your diet and expect to be a healthy person. It's not possible. You can't just be feeding on fast foods in restaurants on a day-to-day -day basis and expect to be healthy. So it's your responsibility to find out how do I feed my body's body so that it is in good health. And, and so I think it's good for us to take good care of our bodies because they are at the temple of God. And eating, I just tell people, in, just for you to eat well, you eat a variety of foods, you eat um, fruits, vegetables, you know, natural foods, you know, like whole foods, whole grain foods, you limit or you avoid. You limit or you high salt, high sugar, high fat intake, over frying food. Just limit that because, you know, research has shown it, it has negative effects. Sasa ata wewe kama wewe ni mutu wakiroho. Seriously. If you're a spiritual person, just know that it has negative effects. Studies have shown that high sugar consumption, high fat intake, high frying of fat. You know when you fry chakula and it is that browning, you know when you put tomatoes, nyanya, akitungu, you fry them, it browns, unaweka nyama, in a brown, in a brown vizuri, alafu in a test vizuri mafta nyingi, your browning, that browning is carcinogenic. You know, there are so many cancers. Some things is just the way we 
not all, but many. That browning, the browning of the meat when we cook, that browning. It is carcinogenic. It, is cancer. it enhances cancer growth. High so sugar intake, I've said, and fat. So just limit some of that. Most of us, all of us have cancer cells. Sawa, sawa. All of us. Like in his, there are things which are like manure for those cancer cells. So that is the salt, the sugar, the fats, and those browning. So let's take care of our bodies. Another thing, as a steward of our bodies, includes sexual purity. According to the Bible, sexual relations are only permitted within the context of marriage. Uh, maybe we, let's just read one. First Corinthians six fifteen to eighteen. First Corinthians one fifteen to eighteen. Sita, Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ Himself? Shall I then take the members of Christ and unite them with a prostitute? Never. Do you not know that he who unites himself with a prostitute is one with her in body? For it is said the two will become one flesh. But whoever is united with the Lord is one with him in spirit. Flee from sexual immorality. All other sins a person commits are outside the body, but whoever sins sexually sins against their own body. So, sex is permitted in marriage. Now, when you are not married, it is not permitted. Now, if you are happen that you are like staying together, a man and a woman, and you are not married, it's like you, you are Christian, I'm assuming you are saved. Do you, it's like you are taking Jesus Christ. Do you think Jesus Christ is enjoying that sexual relationship? Because he's in you. That's why you should just remain pure. But if you are in sexual, in, in my, you are staying together and you are not married, decide to get married, come and see the pastors, Moane, then you continue. But having sex outside marriage is not right. So key is you must, our bodies are important. Take good care of them. As a, as I talk of our bodies, I, I can say that, um, comfortably say that I'm going to be 71 years next month on 29th. <laughs> And I'm in good health. Um, miss, I'm not sick. I, have no me I don't take any medication. I'm healthy. I went to be checked uh, to do some work. So the doctor was asking me, you know, they think once you reach those ages, you should be on medication. There's nothing like that. 
niliuliza unatumia dawa gani kwa sababu anafikiria kwamba ukifikisha huo umri ni lazima uwe unatumia dawa fulani. You 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 can stay healthy because Jesus Christ redeemed us. Unaweza kuwa katika hali nzuri ya afya. We are healthy. Yesu alitukomboa. So there are some things we do which will harm our bodies. Kuna vitu tunafanya ambavyo vitaweza kudhuru mwili wetu. But sometimes we are just sick because of the power of the enemy. Lakini wakati mwingi wakati mwingi tunagonjeka kwa sababu ya nguvu za ibilisi. But first Peter 2:24 says by his stripes we were healed. Lakini a Petero mstakitabu cha kwanza za Peter. So if there's a sickness in your body, kama kuna magonjwa katika mwili wako, whether because of carelessness, ah pengine kwa kuto jali or for whatever reason. Ama kwa sababu nyingine yoyote. By the stripes of Jesus we were healed. Kupitia mapigo ya Yesu uli. And there's restoration today. The devil may tell you that uh, it is you who caused it yourself. Which is a lie. But we are restoration is ours. We sang that we are being restored. Restoration belongs to us because of what Jesus Christ did. Amen. So healing belongs to us and then we take good care of ourselves. Then the other principle is accountability. I think I will read. I think I didn't read it. I will read now. Let's read Matthew 25, 14, eh? 14 to 30. Um, this is uh, the, the parable of the talents. I, I wish I read just a few verses. Again, it will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted his wealth to them. To one, he gave five bags of gold. Maybe I'll just explain. To one, he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one. Then he went, when he came back, the one with five had multiplied to ten. And then the one to two had multiplied to four. And then the one to one had not multiplied. And then the Lord said, you, you know, in, in the final analysis, he said that uh, when he came back, he, he was now asking how they had used it. So just like the servants in this parable, all of us will give an account of whatever. We are not given the same talents, the same abilities, but God will require us to give an account of them. God will ask what we have used it, how we have used it. Because we use them the way God wants. So that's why we look at the issue of time and we look at the, the issue of uh, our bodies. We look now at the issue of finances. Finances is uh, something that the Lord has given us. You know, money is good. Wealth, wealth is something that God... Deuteronomy 8.18. Deuteronomy 8.18. It tells us that remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the ability to produce wealth and so confirms his covenant which he swore to your ancestors as it is today. God gives us power to make wealth. So that we can take care of ourselves. And so we should not waste it. He gives us ideas, abilities to make wealth. And money is just a tool for making wealth. It is not wealth. So we have to take good care of the wealth that God enables us to make. 
uh, utajiri ambao Mungu ametusaidia atatusaidia kutengeneza. Now one of the ways that uh, when you read the Bible we have been taught about giving so I don't want to talk much about that. Tunafundisha juu ya kutoa na sitaki kuendelea sana katika But when you look at it basically the main issues related to wealth is um, tithing mambo yale yanashughulika na utajiri ni mambo ya kutoa fungu la kumi. and planning na kupanga planning how that money or the wealth you have made is being used kupanga vile pesa ile umetengeneza utaitumia na that planning involves na hiyo kupanga inahusu what we refer to as budgeting ni kuhusu mambo ya mpangilio ya vile utatumia pesa yako so if you don't budget kama hutaweza kutengeneza even if you make a lot of wealth utatengeneza pesa mingi it will go you will not manage it well so let us learn to manage by tithing and budgeting our money ni vizuri tukajifunze mambo ya kutoa fungu la 10 na kuweza kupanga panga pesa yetu vizuri vile tutaitumia tithing recognizes god as the source of our resources kutoa fungu la 10 ina onyesha kwamba tunatambua mungu kama yule ambaye anatupea but budgeting recognizes our ability to god to manage our resources our responsibility to god to manage our resources mipangilio ya kutumia pesa yetu inaonyesha kwamba tuna tunaonyesha mungu ya kwamba tuko na jukumu ya kuweza kutumia rasilmali vizuri so in the parable that jesus talks about the the and wise uh, servant and the talent the men with the talents uh, there are some things god teaches us kuna mambo ambayo mungu anatufundisha kutumia lile fumbo very key just write matthew 25:14 to 30 and also luke 16:1 to 13 we shall not read 25 na 5 na luka 16 na luka 16 There are things that we can look at and count. If we don't use what God has given us, we lose it. If we don't manage, we lose. If we don't manage, we lose it. Then God expects us to God expects us to use our talents to increase his kingdom. Mungu anatutazamia tukaweze kutumia talanta zetu ndio tukaweze kupanua ufalme wake. The the man who had one talent said he had hidden it and God told him you should have re- used it so that when I come out get profit. Yule mtu ambaye alikuwa ameficha talanta yake moja Mungu alimwambia kwamba ungeweza kuipanua na kuweza kuifanya ikakuwe nyingi ndio uh, ikakuwe na maongezeko. Then we also you need to use our wisdom in the talents he has given us. God will not supervise us. He expects us to use wisdom, learn, develop ourselves and be able to use it well. Mungu anatutazamia tukaweza kutumia hekima yetu kuweza kushughulikia na kukuza zile talanta ambazo ametupatia ndio tukaweza kukua na Uh, uh, and we need to be to to be to learn to be growing in learning in using god's resources tunastahili kuwa tukijifundisha mambo zaidi ndio tukaweza kukua kutumia rasil mari ambazo mungu ametubariki nazo because we all look forward to that final day when god will say welcome good and faithful servant sababu tunatazamia ile siku ambayo mungu anatuambia karibu mtumishi um, mwaminifu do you think god will say that to, if he came now would he say good and faithful servant unaona kama mungu akikuja saa hii ataweza kukwambia wewe ni mtumishi mwaminifu now we have said that uh, ownership god owns everything we have responsibility we are responsible to what god has given us we are accountable and we get reward based on what we have done Now some one of our key responsibilities is receiving from God. 
So if you are here and you are not saved, make a decision to receive Jesus Christ. You may be in the tent, you may be on the overflow, or you are inside here. If you have not received Jesus Christ, make a decision to receive him today. He is here, and he wants you it's your responsibility. Just accept what he has done for you. So if you are here and you are not saved, and you are outside, you are in the tent, can you lift your hand up? Jesus paid it all. Just accept and come over and receive him. If you are here and you are sick in your body, Jesus died on the cross. He paid for your sickness and diseases. He took your mental, emotional, and physical diseases on the cross. So if you are here and you are sick, or you have a loved one who is unwell, the Lord wants to heal you. To, he healed you 2,000 years ago. Just come and receive. I request the ministry team member, ministers to stand in the tent, in the church and in the overflow. Just come over and receive because we receive from God. We are responsible for receiving. So if you are here, you are unwell, you have somebody who is unwell, just come over and receive what Jesus already paid for you. Uh, and if you are here and maybe you have uh, not given your life to the Lord, just come forward and receive from the Lord salvation. You may also be here. One of our responsibilities is healthy relationship. You may be here and you are having challenges in your relationship. Jesus restored us back to God and is able to restore you back to each other. You may have be having challenges in your family with your children or your parents or your friends your colleagues just come over and receive restoration of your relationships in Jesus name or you are here and you are having uh, financial challenges you may have financial challenges maybe it may be because of your own doing or just because of what problems themselves God is a master of restoration he wants to restore you financially just come and receive restoration in terms of your finances Jesus was made poor that you become rich you don't pay for, you don't earn anything from God you just receive you just come and receive because he is here to give you he, Jesus paid for it your responsibility is receiving as, as, as uh, the ministers are praying for you I want to uh, Media, if you can project for us, just to project for me, uh, Mark 11:24. Mark 11:24. As we continue, therefore I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it, and it will be yours. So even as you come, believe. We are asking. Believe. Your part is just to believe that you have received it and you will have it. So 
You may also be having challenges in, in terms of your relationships, as I've said. You feel rejection, unwanted, isolation. Just come and receive restoration because Jesus took your rejection on the cross. Jesus took all the shame on that cross for you. So just come and receive from him what he died to give you. Healing is yours because of what Jesus Christ did on Calvary. And so just come and receive. And receive salvation. Jesus died, he paid for it by the sins, he shed his blood and took away our sins. And it's for you is just to come and receive. He says, Come unto me, all you that are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He's God who is able, He's God of restoration, He's God who is the one who fights our battles. Victory is ours because of Calvary. We receive it, we believe and receive. So just come and believe together and receive what Jesus died to give you. He loves you and he wants you to walk in what he provided. He, the devil can't put on you what Jesus legally paid for for you. So receive your healing, receive your deliverance, receive your restoration in whichever area. The Lord is faithful. He blessed you at Calvary. He wants you to walk in those blessings. So receive by faith. Just believe. And you receive in Jesus' name.